was there to request you to kindly introduce yourself a bit, Ash. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think by saying that it's going to go online, you <coughs> kind of uh, frightened me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, I'm just quiet. Okay, um, I'm Julie De Silva. I'm from Trivandrum. And I, um, we have set up a place, a training firm named Mindlings, where we train, uh, we have personal as well as corporate trainings, and our main focus is NMP. So NMP, um, for those who are not, uh, have not heard about it, it's Neuro Linguistic Programming. I'll give you a brief idea of what it is in a, in a bit. Uh, but before going into it, can I ask you all, how much do you know yourself? You know, from a, a scale to say from 0 to 10, 0 being the least and 10 being the highest. How many of you would say, I know myself to what uh, scale? Four. Any answers? Three. So, three, <laughs> seven, 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 okay. Seven, eight. Is it that you age and you? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah. That's a good question. To a certain extent, probably. Yeah. But there are people who, if, if we ask them, how much do you know yourself, they would say that I know myself 100%. <laughs> Which I don't know if we can believe that or not. So, um, I would say, from my experience till now, seeing people, talking to people, because before I started the NMP training, I was a counselor, but not a counselor as in the practicing, practicing kind of a counselor. I used to help people. It was like a hobby for me. I used to like, I mean, I still do, I like uh, talking to people and uh, helping them help themselves. Because I don't believe in giving advice or judging a person from what uh, we see from outside. So NLP, uh, when I went for the training initially from uh, the organization I was working in, which was Alliance in Technopark, I went for a two-day program initially. And the kind of awareness I got from those two days is something that I've never come across in the past number of years, I'm not going to tell you my age, number of years that I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you know, uh, lived. I suddenly saw myself from a totally different perspective. I think that's something that all of us, or many of us miss. We have been going in and out, day in and day out, going probably to the same office, coming out of there, doing the same routine work. What was your score before and after the program? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, before I would, have, I would have said I know myself nine. But now, after the program? After the program, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest. Close to zero? <laughs> Almost, because every time suddenly, when I, even when I'm in a training program, suddenly I answer something to a question. And I realize, oh my god, I didn't know that, that I knew it. It's a learning for me. But somewhere in my unconscious, it's all stored. Like they say, your conscious mind grabs around six to eight, if I'm not sure the number is correct, six to eight bits of information, but your unconscious mind grabs around two million bits of information. When you walk into this room, how many of us remember the, the color of the cover on, our, on the chair when we go out? Consciously, we may not remember, but unconsciously, we know. That's why the hypnotists work well with criminals because, you know, it's a not, well, uh, not criminals, I'm talking about uh, investigation. Sometimes, you, you know, there was this incident um, in a city, there was a bank robbery, and uh, after some, some days, security was asked about, you know, who was it uh, to explain who, you know, what, what did he look like, what vehicle they came in. He said, I don't remember anything. So when he was hypnotized, he even remembered the number on the registration plate. So that's the kind of information we have already. All the resources that we need to be a successful, to be a happy person, or to be a stress-free person is in us, which we don't see, which we don't seek. We go out, we look around, we go to a lot
lot of other places but ourselves to find peace, to find success. I never knew that I could stand in front of a group of people and talk two years ago. Before that, those two years, if you had asked me, I would have said, no way. Why? Because I don't know what people, people are going to think about me. I don't know if whatever I say is going to be right or wrong. So there was always this right and wrong. And NLP is all about linking your thoughts to your words and your actions and ultimately reaching that desired goal. So what are those words and thoughts that will lead you there? If you want something, how many of you say that you want it? You go to a house, you are asked, do you want tea or coffee? We end up saying, I don't want coffee. Rather than saying, I want tea. That happens in our life. In our day-to-day -day life, we, you know, they, I've met a lot of women who says, before I got married, I always prayed that I don't want somebody who smokes. And I ended up with somebody who's, who's a chain smoker. I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to not get into that college. What is stopping us from wanting what we really want? Ask yourself what you want. How many of us know what we want really in life? I never knew what I wanted. To be honest, I never, didn't want to be a trainer. I, at least I thought that I didn't want to be a trainer initially. But even now, training is not my passion. NLP is my passion. Helping people is my passion. I'm not a public orator or I, I don't know if I'm a good trainer, but what I know is if I say something to people, people believe me. Because whatever I say, I believe in it. I have experienced it and I'm committed to it. So NLP or no NLP, if you know what you want and if you have the guts to go and get it, you can achieve it. And your thought process works wonders. The positivity in your thoughts gives out positive words. They talk about uh, influential language. Communicate to influence. So how do you communicate? First you need to know the other person. Like Sir was saying, emotional intelligence is not only knowing ourselves, it's also knowing the people around you. Why they say what they say? Why do I do what I do? What kind of situation triggers emotions? We may not know what makes me angry, what makes me happy. These are things which you introspect and think for yourself, maybe or may not be you might know. Because NLP says everything we see, even ourselves, is a map in our mind. It's a map. Map is not the reality. If I ask you about this table, one person might say, yeah, it's a very good table. I like the fashion. It looks good. One person might say, no, I don't like the looks of it. I don't like the color. So I, I don't think this kind of table is going to be useful for me. So it's all about how you perceive the world. There was this, uh, the message that was passed around in WhatsApp about the dog. There was a time when all the, the dogs were in the picture in WhatsApp messages. A dog goes into a room, comes out, but be very happy, wagging the tail, goes out. Another dog goes in and it comes out with a big frown and growling. So this lady who was watching, he, she wonders what made one dog happy and the other dog barking and growling. It goes in, it, he, she goes into the room to find out what it is and there, there are nothing but mirrors in that room. <laughs> so the first dog went in wagging his tail and saw many dogs wagging their tails at him. And the second dog went growling inside and saw many dogs growling back at him. So it is your own reflection. Honestly, that's what it is. 
somebody, some intelligent person put it in such a way that people will understand, but I don't know how many of us still understand. If I am angry, anything the other person says will trigger more anger. Understand your own emotions, come to a state when you are accepted to others and you accept others. It's easily said than done, but believe me, it is easy. There is also something that uh, interests me a lot about NNP is uh, habits, about making and breaking habits, and about empowering beliefs, limiting beliefs. These two topics are the most important and uh, topics for me. When you say habit, how many days does it take to make a habit? Twenty-one. 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 Nine. Forty-one. Twenty-one, forty-eight. Okay, let me tell you the story. There was this lady in her sixties. She had been a chain smoker throughout her, you know, number of, I mean, not her life, but for some, for a quite a long time. So uh, her family members tried everything they could to make her quit smoking. They went, sent her to the rehabilitation center for yoga, for meditation, for all kinds of things you can think about. So she uh, says, okay, I will go for it. She goes there and then she comes back and then she still she sits and keeps smoking. One fine day she faints. She is taken to the doctor. The doctor said, madam, you keep on smoking. You are going to die in a year's time. That's guaranteed because it's cancer and it's, been, it's spreading. She comes back home, takes all the cigarettes she has, chucks it out and says, no more smoking. And she's never smoked after that and she lived for around one and a half years time. So how long did she take to break that habit that she had for so many years? A Just moment. a moment. A moment. If you have the drive to do something, you will do it no matter what. It doesn't take time. Change happens like that. But you have to decide that you want to change from inside. That unconscious shift has to happen. That's what I was saying in trainings. I'm not very fond of language training because, because one main reason is language training is more of a, I want to tra get trained in language because I want that job. So it is not that language that is inspiring them to come for a training, but it's something else. So that's one of the reasons I don't go into language training because when I train in NLP, it's only people who really want to change from within. There are people who come because somebody has pushed them uh, for it, but ultimately they keep things, at least seeing some something out of it, some different point of view. 